One of the biggest things that we pay a price for is the tongue. The Prophet ﷺ in a hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi makes mention of the pillars of Islam. He was asked by the companions radiallahu anhum, what is it that I need to do in order to ensure my entry into paradise and my protection from hellfire? So the first thing he said is you should worship Allah without associating partners. You should fulfill your five daily prayers. You should fast in the month of Ramadan. You should give charity from what Allah has given you. And you should go for the pilgrimage, the Hajj, if you are able and capable. And then he continued to mention other more important things in terms of how to uphold these pillars of Islam. Because it's not to my benefit to be a person who prays five times a day, but I'm losing the reward of the prayer because of something. Or I'm very charitable, but I'm losing it because of something. So he spoke about the main point being submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the peak being the sacrifice that you and I would make in order to fulfill the obligations to Allah. When we speak of jihad in Islam, people have given it a very narrow meaning that they want to portray to the world. When the Muslims say jihad, it means something negative. It means violence. It means so on. That is not correct. Jihad means a struggle. There is a struggle required to do that which Allah wants you to do in terms of your five daily prayer. We cannot get up for Salatul Fajr at times because we're not struggling or we're not striving good enough or well enough or to the degree that we're meant to. That's a jihad. But obviously there are different levels of jihad to protect yourself and defend yourself is one of the levels. Someone comes to slap me, I might want to process it in a few ways based on what is most beneficial that he doesn't slap me again. And at the same time, I don't make the situation worse. When someone swears me, I also need to look at that and quickly process how I would like to react. I want to react in a way that I solve the problem and I want to react in a way that he doesn't do that again. So it's quite tricky. Nonetheless, all that is a jihad. It's a struggle in life to surrender to the decree and destiny that Allah's chosen for you is also a struggle to bear patience is also a struggle. If Allah's chosen that you're going to be this color, this type of hair, this race, this, for example, build and so on, there is nothing you can do about it at times besides surrender to the decree of Allah. And if there is something you can do about something that might not be so normal, then you may do it within that limit that is not displeasing to Allah. What this means is, say you have a nose and it's a bent nose. And everyone says your nose is bent. Now, for your information, all our noses are bent. Nobody on earth has a straight nose, not one person. It might look straight to you, but it's not. It's not possible. You can't have that. You can argue with me in the comments if you see this video later. But nonetheless, we look at ourselves too much in the mirror. So we see faults. My one eye is big. The other eye is small. The nose is heading to the left. The other one's heading to the right. And my lip is this way. And the other thing is this way. And my one cheek is up and the other one is down. And one side of my face is 0.009 millimeters bigger than the other side because I sleep on this side and I don't on that side. And ah, all that is shaitan. You need to be patient. Thank Allah. Allah chose you. You don't, you don't change all of that. But if your nose is totally like, you know, bent, it's affecting your mind. You are allowed to correct it you are your teeth are not straight your bite is wrong there is you have an overbite something you are allowed to correct that without a doubt you are you can't see properly you can either have laser you can wear glasses you can wear contacts no problem so let's not confuse it if something is wrong you can correct it but when something is right you can't play with it that's what I mean Allah chose your build for example it's okay the biggest gift you can give yourself is to love yourself the way Allah made you. Whoever loves you that way, Alhamdulillah. Whoever doesn't, A'udhu Billah. They can fly a kite. Allah, they can fly a kite. We don't need them. And if someone's not going to respect me because of the way Allah's made me, I promise you they have no space in your life. You make dua for them and move on. People might not like you based on a few things. So what? They can go. In all honesty, they need help, not me. May Allah Almighty grant us the ability to love ourselves the way He made us. But 
In all honesty, there is a lot that we require when it comes to accepting what Allah's chosen for me. You can't find a job, you can't find a spouse, or you found a spouse, but you're going to have to sacrifice. We have a problem today. So many people, boys and girls, they say, I want to get married, but I want you to accept me exactly the way I am. No changes. Okay, it sounds correct. If you're talking about things that Allah has made you in a way that you can't really change, yes, we agree. But if you're talking about you can't change me when you are far from Allah, then why did you get married? The whole idea of getting married is to remind you of your prayer, remind you of your duties unto Allah, remind you of the haram that you might be doing so that together we can go to paradise. That's the idea of coming together in marriage. So for someone to say, accept me as I am, it's a double-edged sword. What do you mean? Do you really mean that when you don't pray, you sleep, you're drinking, you're going clubbing, then I must just say, no, I've got to accept you as you are. No way, no way, no way. We reject that statement. But accept me as I am in the sense that, look, my complexion, maybe my skin, my hair, whatever you take me as I am, alhamdulillah. And, uh, you know, the fact that you might be bald, whatever, alhamdulillah, we don't mind. You know what? We accept you as you are. You don't really need to go to Turkey. But if you'd like to, inshallah, it's not prohibited. See all the smiles. Some of you are probably camouflaging what happened. Nonetheless, it's okay. But getting back to the point, when the Prophet ﷺ spoke about these acts of worship and he spoke about jihad and the struggle that is required in order to remain on the path, do you know what? He says, should I inform you of the thing that controls all of this? So Mu'adh ibn Jabal anhu says, yes, O Messenger. He says, control your tongue. Hold back your tongue. In a narration, Amlik Lisanak, control your tongue. Kuffa alayka hada. He pointed to his tongue. He says, hold this thing back. Why? Because it will make or break every other thing that we just mentioned. Your tongue. A man is not known by anything better than his tongue. Same applies to a woman. You can be the most pious. If your tongue is messed, you are messed. If you are the wealthiest, if your tongue is messed, you are messed. If you are the poorest, but your tongue is amazing and you only say beautiful, empowering, encouraging words, you are an amazing human being. People will love the interaction with you. They meet you. They feel empowered because they know this person does not insult, does not abuse, does not hurt, does not hate with their tongues. Now, I want to quickly draw a very Im important parallel and I know time is not on our side. I'm used to normally talking for a long, long time, but nonetheless, Hisham here, mashallah, you know, he's always telling me you can talk as long as you want, but this is the timing, you know. In a nutshell, don't go beyond it. It's okay. My brothers and sisters, Moses, Musa alayhi salam, was sent to Firaun, the Pharaoh. To put you in the picture, the worst of mankind at the time was the one whom the best of mankind at the time was sent to. Allah already knew the Pharaoh is not going to accept anything. Allah knew that he's not going to accept the message, he's going to reject it, he's going to die on kufr or disbelief, right? Did Allah not know that? Allah knew it. So why would Allah Almighty want a messenger to have an entire mission that he would mention in the Quran that would come down to all the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about something where there was a man who wasn't going to accept the message and how Allah sent this man in order to show you and I the importance, the greatness of so many things, one of them being the way you talk to someone. The way you make them feel. Don't give them the excuse. Look, if I see bad and I stand on the mimbar and I start talking about individuals, insulting them, belittling them, one day they will come right. When they do come right by the will of Allah, what will happen? I will have a sin for everything I said. I pay the heaviest price for whatever I said, the insulting. Allah refused and denied Musa alayhi salam to insult the Pharaoh. But we are insulting people better than the Pharaoh and we are nowhere near Musa alayhi salam. When he comes right one day, we will be at loss. I'd rather say a good word and be contributing towards correcting the matter so it can be a sadaqa jariya for me. It's an act of charity when he comes right. Everything he does, I got a reward for it. Guy says, you know, be, be careful. This guy goes to the clubs and pubs. Salam alaikum, my brother. How are you? Hey, lovely to see you. Mashallah, amazing. You're looking good. What did I do? Nothing. I'm empowering him. That's all. 
And he'll feel the guilt, inshallah. Next time, make dua for him. You see him again, my brother, amazing, lovely, mashallah, how are you? Looking good. He'll want to come. When he hears you have a talk, he'll pitch up and he'll sit in the first stuff. What happens? He'll then come to the masjid. Every time he comes to pray, you get a full reward for it. When he started reading the Quran as a result of your good words, you get a reward for it. That is your Jannah. You might not have gotten paradise because of your deeds, but you got paradise because you encouraged others to do good deeds. It's possible. That would have earned the mercy of Allah, maybe more than this. It happens. So be careful, go easy with your tongue. I pity those who swear and belittle. The hadith says a mu'min does not belittle, does not abuse, does not swear, does not curse. We are believers. Are you a believer? In the name of Islam, we curse. People have a bad tongue sometimes. The message I have for you today, my brothers, my sisters, if you want to go home with something that will change your life, Wallahi, I guarantee you, because it's in the hadith, just control your mouth. Just watch your tongue. That's it. Say brilliant words. Listen to the hadith. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, truly, which means you believe I have to stand and give account of my deeds and you are worried about it. Falyakul khayran aw liyasmut. Either utter that which is good or keep quiet. There's no third option for a believer. I see you. I know something about you that might be negative. I'm not going to belittle you because I have more negatives than you that you don't know about. I'm not going to belittle you, especially public shaming. That is something almost unforgivable. Let me quickly explain why. I gave you the example of Moses and the Pharaoh. Public shaming was prohibited. I can tell you what else. When you belittle someone, you say something to them and you are actually insulting them, abusing them on a public platform, the amount of damage that happens is so intense and so severe, entire society goes down one notch. You know, there is a politician in one of the countries that came into power and his biggest weakness, they say he was a lovely guy, lovely guy, he may have been, I also think he probably was a lovely guy. His biggest weakness was his tongue. No one told him that. Nobody told him that. Every time he got up, the only thing that we know, he insulted other politicians in a public way. That's it. He insulted them. So no matter what good you did, you gave them reason to get up and become fierce against you. You actually breathed energy into their life give them reason to knock you out because you're talking too much. That's the problem. You're insulting in public people who have authority also. They can fix you if they want. When, when they get up, they will make sure that they nail you. Do you really want to solve the problem? If you do, watch your tongue. Say good words. Look, I disagree with you, my brother, but I respect you. I honor you. You can say I disagree. I can even say you are wrong, my brother. I, I came and put up this tripod. There might be some people who believe it's totally haram. I respect you. I honor you. And I believe you should not do it if you believe that. But for me, leave me alone. Thank you. I didn't ask someone to do it. I did it myself. Small example, right? But we love you. And I love you with the difference. It doesn't mean because I differ with you that I need to insult you, abuse you, stand up and say this guy, this and this guy. You pay a price for that. Entire community drops down because the whole community starts swearing each other. Why? That's what they learned. That's what they learned. And what will happen to the ch children and the grandchildren? They'll start abusing in a bigger way. And we didn't gain anything. So the Prophet ﷺ says, watch your tongue. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal asks a question. He says, O Messenger, will we be responsible for what we say? What that would mean is, I didn't do anything. I just told you you're stupid, right? I didn't do anything. I just told you. What's the big deal? The Prophet ﷺ says, Thakilatka ummuka ya Mu'ad. That's a powerful statement. In our language, it means, what are you talking about, O Mu'ad? وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَنَاخِرِهِمْ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ Is there any other reason that people's faces will be smeared in hellfire besides their tongues? Whoa! Did you hear that? That means it's your tongue. You utter your shahada with your tongue. You praise Allah with your tongue. You say good words with your tongue. Why do you want to say bad things? You pay a price in the dunya and the akhirah. Backbiting is dhikruka akhaka bimayakra. To say the truth about someone behind their backs in a way that they will be belittled is called backbiting. It's not a lie. It's the truth. I heard something about you and I'm relating it. Nowadays, it's so bad because it's just the click of a button on the phone or the touching of a screen. That's it. And what did you do? You belittle people. 
You don't even know they might be friends of Allah or they might be future friends of Allah. Allah might know that in future this person is going to come to me. You insulted, you abused, you spread tales. It was all done either on Twitter or WhatsApp, whatever it may be. We're living in an age of social media. But in all honesty, when you think about it carefully and you hold yourself back, what happens? You are protecting yourself from engaging in a major sin known as backbiting. The Quran says, would any one of you like that the flesh of your dead brother would be consumed and you wouldn't like it, right? You wouldn't like it. I wouldn't. So Islam says backbiting, which is telling the truth, not a lie. Backbiting is when you tell the truth about someone behind their backs in a way that they don't like it, then you're eating the flesh of a dead person. What about if you're lying? You don't even know this person. We're living in an age where we're doing a lot of good deeds. But we're paying a price. We're paying a price because of the level that we're supposed to be at that we're not at of communication. Wallahi, do better. Wallahi, I want to tell you, sometimes I sit and look at non-Muslims in the professional world and the way they deal with each other. So much of discipline and integrity. And I tell myself, you know what? We are believers. We've been taught about the hereafter as well. Let's do better. I've worked on myself for years on end and I can feel the improvement and I invite you to do something even better by the will of Allah. I'm a nobody, but I'm telling you, no matter how holy you think you are, your tongue says it all. No matter how powerful, authoritative, well, whatever you think you are, go easy. Everyone is human. Allah has put them in your lives to test you. You're humble or not? If you are, Alhamdulillah. If you're not, it's time to improve. That's why we are here today. I wouldn't have dreamt yesterday that I was going to be here today, but here I am. And I thought of this message because of something that occurred last night. And I told myself, if it was just the tongue that was a little bit better, we could have solved the problem. Solve the problem. Sometimes you go too hard on someone, you swore them, curse them, what, 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 what. And sometimes you do it in your own circles. Let me tell you something. There is nothing private anymore on earth. Your best friend is telling other people exactly what you said, knowingly or unknowingly. Knowingly or unknowingly, because that's how the world has become. Everyone's become, you know, a person who wants to be the first to know, the first to tell. You see? Right? May Allah Almighty grant us ease. Let's correct the way we speak about each other. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be able to help the situations. We'll be able to improve family relations. I know things are tough, but sometimes things are tough. See, he's telling me there's one minute left. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. Things are tough, but at the same time, my brothers and sisters, we need, we need to respect each other. The, the, the least you can offer someone is to use your tongue in a correct way. That's the least you can do. And actually, you're offering it to yourself. Because one last thing I want to quickly say, when you come on the day of Qiyamah with so many good deeds, one of the biggest ways you're going to lose is because you insulted this one, belittled that one, spoke bad about that one, backbitten about that one, slandered about that one. So your salah is gone there, your hajj is gone there, your zakat is gone there, and you sitting with nothing. What happened? Your tongue. So when the Prophet ﷺ says, watch your tongue, it's a powerful hadith. He spoke about it beyond, over and above and beyond your pillars and everything because you're going to fulfill all of that. Yes, you're a Muslim, but you might lose everything because of your tongue.